sa inyo lahat mga kaibigan, mga kapatiran. Welcome sa ating God's Word for Today devotional sa umagang ito. At nandito na tayo sa Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 26 to 31 as we close this chapter today. Nehemiah 9 verse 26 to 31 Gayon may naging maswayin sila at nagimagsik laban sa iyo at tinalikuran ng iyong kautusan at pinatay ang iyong mga propeta na nagbabala sa kanila upang mapanumbalik sa iyo at sila ay gumawa ng mabibigat na paglapastangan. Kaya tibinigay mo sila sa kamay ng kanilang mga kaaway na siyang nagpahirap sa kanila. At sa panahon ng kanilang paghihirap ay lumaing sila sa iyo at dininig mo sila mula sa langit. At ayon sa iyong kadakilang kaawaan ay binigyan mo sila ng mga tagapagligtas na nagligtas kanila sa kamay ng kanilang, kanilang mga kaaway. Ngunit pagkatapos na sila magkaroon ng kapahingaan, muli silang gumawa ng kasamaan sa harapan mo at iniwan mo sila sa kamay ng kanilang mga kaaway. Kahit sila ay nagkaroon ng kapahamalaan uh, sa kanila, ngunit nang sila ay manumbalik sa dumaing sa iyo, iyong dininig mula sa langit at maraming ulit na iyong iniligtas sila ayon sa iyong kawaan. At iyong binalaan sila upang may balik sila sa iyong kautusan. Ngunit kumilo silang may kapangahasan at hindi tinupad ang iyong mga utos, kundi nakasala laban sa iyong mga batas. Na kung tutuparin ito ng isang tao, siya ay mapubuhay at iniurong ang balikat at pinatigas ang kanilang liig at hindi sumunod. Maraming taon mo silang tiniis at nagbabala sa kanina ang iyong spirito sa pamamagitan ng iyong mga propeta. Gayun may ayaw nilang makinig. Kaya't ibinigay mo sila sa kamay ng mga tao ng mga lupain. Gayun may sa iyong dakilang, dakilang mga kaawaan ay hindi mo sila binas- binakasan o tinalikuran man sila sapagkat ikaw ay mag- mapagpala at maawaing Diyos. Uh, in this long stretch sa ating binasa ay binanggit nila sa kanilang prayer and worship nila ni Nehemiah, Ezra, and the leaders and all the people. Binigit nila ang nangyari po sa kanila mga ninuno who were chastised by God. Chastisement. And chastisement is a reality sa ating mga anak ng Panginoon because there are times that we run away from God. It's tragic, di ba? Na sa panahon ng comfort and abundance, ang mga anak ng Diyos ay tumalikod sa kanya. Ito ang ating naobserbahan. Man is more vulnerable in times of abundance than in times of lack. Di ba? Mayroon ko sabihan na for a man to test a hundred times sa test ng adversities, only one will pass the test of adversity. It's tragic because yun po ang kondisyon nating puso. Kaya nga dito, when they rebel and blaspheme against God, God gave them over to their enemies who made them to suffer. Simply said, ang kanilang suffering was a chastisement from God. And certainly, this was a consequence of their sins. Hindi naman gagawin ng Panginoon sa kanila ito kung hindi sila tumalikod sa Panginoon. The writer of Hebrews says, na tungkol po sa chastisement sa kanya mga kanakan. Let me read Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7 to 9. For the Lord disciplines or chastises the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have an earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject 
to the Father of Spirits and Lake? So this is the question sa either na binato or itinanong sa atin. Hindi ba disiplinahin tayo ng Panginoon who loves us so much than our earthly fathers? So ang pagmamahal ng Panginoon is not a pampering love. God's love is a filtering love or a purifying love. You know, ang pagmamahal ng tao minsan is tainted by pampering, selfish, makasarili. But God is too holy and too wise to deal with us with pamperings. God is not manipulating us for himself. God is a righteous and holy God. So, ang kanyang pagmamahal is a purifying love. After all, sabi po sa 1 Corinthians 13, sabi ni Pablo doon that love does not rejoice in wrongdoings or does not rejoice in evil, but rejoices in the truth. God brings the seismic as a wake-up call to His people. Minsan kung nawalan na tayo sa landas at minsan iniisip natin na tama niya ating ginagawa, mayroong nangyari sa atin na nasaktan tayo as a form of His discipline, wake-up call yun. And we must listen to it. And as a result, God's people felt the pain, then turned back to Him. Then, having been forgiven and blessed and satisfied by God, nalimutan na nila ang Panginoon, they turn against God, and this is the cycle na magkikita natin sa Book of Judges. The cycle of blessing, rebellion, chastisement, repentance, then back to blessing. This cycle seemed endless. Yet, in all this, God was true to His covenant to His people. He did not change. Hindi nagbabago ang Panginoon. God can change His dealings with His people, but hindi nagbabago ang Panginoon in terms of His nature and His character. Now, what does this mean to us today? Ang mga Hudiyo, yun yung natawag ni Maya, Isra, after they built the temple and the wall respectively, they worshiped the Lord and remember all this. And this is important because we know na ang layunin ng Panginoon is not the physical structure of walls and temple. Ang purpose ng Panginoon is to bring back their hearts unto Him. So ang tanong natin sa ating sarili this morning is, are we different than these Jews? Magkaiba ba tayo? Are we not like them? Are we not the same gullible people that we have this cycle of having pain, chastise, and then we are sorry and God forgive us and then we receive the blessing then malimutan na naman natin ang Panginoon. We are no different than the Jews. Hindi ba? Sometimes we feel as if God has gone or gotten tired of us. Lord, ulit-ulit na akong humingi ng kapatawaran sa inyo. And seems to us that God is distant. It seems to us that God might be tired of us. But that is our feeling. But the truth is that God does not change. Mayroon sometimes na ating naramdaman that we could not ask Him to forgive us because there is a lingering sin that besits us that we tend to have this repeated, repeated confession asking for forgiveness, and then doing it again. But don't be fooled by your feelings because God is always a forgiving and a merciful God. God can forgive and will always forgive no matter what. God is never tired of us and will never turn away from the repentant heart. Thankfully, ang kanyang pasensya never, never runs out. After all, sa hindi pa tayo nagkasala, He knows our frame. He knows that we are made of dust. But this should not make, or this should not be a reason for us to abuse the goodness of God. Oh yes, God knows that we are made of dust, but we should strive to be holy. Sabi ng Panginoon, be holy for I am holy. Strive to live righteousness because you have already the power in you through the Spirit. But despite how we follow the 
spirits promptings, we still can sin. But I hope that we are progressing not to sin more than before. We are progressing towards the holiness that God decides for us until we will be with him in glory. This is a journey, folks. And there are twists and turns. There are ups and downs. The journey is not, is not easy. But thank God that God is faithful. He will follow us through. Yes, we can experience chastisement and discipline, but it's because God loves us. Manalangin tayo. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Bless this to our hearts and help us to remember that you are so loving. You cannot allow sin and evil, Lord, to continue in us. That's why you allow pain, you allow chastisement and pleasant things to happen in our lives because you want us to go back to, to you because you are the jealous God. And remember, help us to remember that you have bought us with a price and we don't belong anymore to ourselves, but to Christ who redeemed us. So thank you, the Father, for this reminder today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.